If you like pina coladas and getting caught in the rain, if you're not into yoga, if you have half a brain, if you like making love up at midnight, oh, and sorry, welcome back to the Turd Fur channel. So, anyway, got the music on my mind today. Uh, this video is picking up where the last one left off about calculating work done in thermodynamics problems, especially from like PV diagrams. This is the one equation that we've done so far. And all this video is going to be is just two examples or so I'm going to work that look like this using PV diagrams and finding work. Um, this is a typical of what your example would look like. And this would be point A, B. Uh, the problem might even give you like another like this one, for instance, and say it might kind of continue on and say that there's a point C. And a lot of the times what the problems will do is they'll want you to find the work done from A to B, work done during cycle BC, and then they'll want the total work. So an example in this problem would be like it would say find the work done from A to B. And we did this in the last video. Negative P, and in the case of A to B, your P is 3 times 10 to the 5. So that is my pressure, 3 times 10 to the 5 times my change in volume. Remember, delta V just means final minus initial. So in this case, it would be my final volume is 3. So it would be 3 minus 1 for my volumes in this problem. And when we do this, this would actually come out to negative 6 times 10 to the 5 joules, meaning in this case work was done by the gas. We discussed this in the last video. If you get a negative answer, and you can kind of think of like the cylinder losing energy. The cylinder expanded and lost energy maybe. You can think of it that way and help know that the work was done by the gas. Whereas if the work comes out positive, somebody compressed the cylinder. So work was done on the gas at that rate. But anyway, that would be work AB. Then we could find work BC. And this is how a lot of these problems look. In the case of BC, the first thing I notice is this. What would my change in volume be from B to C? Well, what is my volume at point B? Well, it's 3. What is my volume at point uh, C? Well, it's also 3. So in the case of this problem, uh, the change in volume from B to C is 0. And since the volume change was 0, that means the work from B to C is also a 0. So the work done in a, this had a term, it's called isovolumetric. This one was called isobaric. In an isovolumetric process, the work done is actually a zero. Now, sometimes the problem might also give you a second part and say, like, what is the work A to C or A, B, C or something? Well, all you have to do is sum up all your works. So in this case, I would just add up those two works that make up that entire process, which the second one was zero, so the answer is negative six times 10 to the five joules. And that is, this is a very common what these problems ask. Uh, you can also, if you remember yesterday when I did my last video, I said you can find the work, like for example, if you wanna find work A, B, you can just look at the area underneath the line A, B which the area underneath AB would be 3 times, well, that's 2. So that's 6 times 10 to the 5. And knowing that it goes to the right, make it negative. So if you've forgotten that yesterday, one way, and you will see me do this, work is equal to negative of the area underneath one of these PV diagrams. And that comes in real handy, especially if there's a triangle or something in the problem where the pressure isn't constant and we can't just apply this equation to it up here. Uh, by the way, this also works out pretty good too, like in the second situation where we had B to C over here. Well, when we had B, C, find the area underneath that line. Well, there is no area under that line. So that lets you know that the work there is zero. Um, a very common thing to be done in these problems, this would be like the Buick of the list. Somebody will give you a problem that looks like this. So there's like A to B. And then they might have this to C. And then it goes over here to point D and then maybe up straight up to point E. 
And what they'll actually have you trying to figure out in the problem is what is work A, B? What is work B, C? What is work C, D? What is work D, E? And so what you're going to do is you're going to go through and find every one of those works out independent of each other. So you go through and find out each individual work, and then all you have to do is sum all those works together, and that will tell you the work for the whole process. Well, let's do an example. This is this problem's probably in like every textbook out there. Calculate the work done along each path in the problem. So it says, calculate the work done from IAF. And this is exactly what we were just looking at a second ago. So work done between IAF. And I'm going to do this just by, I'm just going to calculate by the areas maybe in this problem. I don't know. Maybe we'll actually do our problems right. Oh, let's do the formulas. Tell you what. Work is equal to. What is the area? If that says color change one more time, Windows 7, Bill Gates, I will find you and smack you over this thing. Anyway, now that I've had my meltdown, find the area. Ignore all this other stuff. All I'm looking at is this. Find the area under work under IA. So what I'm actually going to try and do is find the work done between I and A. Well, that would be negative of the area, and in this case, negative of the area underneath that, well, let's see, that would be base times height, and that comes out to negative 8. And you're like, bam, that's easy. And then look at this, work done between A and F. We just did this a second ago. A to F, look at line A to F. Line A to F, that's isovolumetric, which means the work done between A and F is zero. So thus, that means the work done IAF is equal to negative 8 and zero. Now, that would be wrong if I wrote joules down there because that is not the right unit for this. You see, this problem did something. It gave me the wrong units. It gave me ATMs and liters, which could make you be like, oh, no, that's horrible. Well, it's actually an easy fix. If you work a problem with this, don't try to change all these units in the problem. Just do this. Here is a very handy trick. If you work a PV problem and it gives you ATMs and liters instead of and again, a lot of them will give you PA and meters cubed. But if it gives you these units, atmospheres and liters, all you have to do is take your answers that you get times by 101.325, and that will give you your answer in joules. It's just the conversion process you would take. I'm just going to be lazy in times about 101 just for the sake of easy math, and that would give me negative 808 joules, and if you look, the answer is actually 810 in the textbook. And that's just because I was a little lazy and didn't do the 0.325. Uh, now, let's look at the next one. Find the work done from I to F. So if I want to find the work done from I to F, negative of the area underneath that line. Well, and what makes these hard is you need to ignore everything but what you're looking at. So here's the thing, I to F is actually made up of two parts. This triangle, but we've also got to find the area of this small box under there as well. So let's find the area underneath line IF across here. Well, that's easy. Work IF would be Let's see, one half, the base and height of that triangle. Two, now get this, the triangle's height is just three, one to four. So two times three. And then we also need to add that to, uh, let's see, oh yeah, the little square at the bottom, which would be, it's not a triangle, so just base times height. So in this case, it would be one times two. And so that means we've got, oh, wow, my brain is tired. Three plus, oh, goodness, one times two. But again, this is the wrong unit, but I can fix it. I'm going to times it by 101.325, 
which would give me analysis negative 505 joules which the answer book says 507 and that's because I didn't do the 325 anyway uh, why is it the negative because again work is equal to the negative of the area underneath this line when you're doing it this way now the only thing that somebody could do to mess you up on this if you know this in this picture if you know this in this picture the arrows are all like going to the right hey easy trick what would you do if you were doing this problem and the arrow actually pointed the other way if you ever work a problem and the arrows move into the left work would just be equal to positive that's the only difference it'd be the exact you'd work the problem the same way but all your answers would be positive answers if they're moving to the right uh, that's all there is to that one uh, let's do this one last problem a problem said find the work done and this one's already been great it's broken it down like this it says find the work done between I and F here's the thing if you want to find the work between I and F you have to find the work under each single piece of this so as I go through here I'm gonna see if I can't do this so I'm gonna first find the area underneath that line so the area underneath that would be, let's see, 1 times 6 times 10 to the 6. And this is in PAs already, so there's no conversions. So that would be 6 times 10 to the 6. And then now to find the work done under this piece. And if you notice, there's going to be two components to it because of that triangle. i got to find the area of the triangle. So that's one half the base and height of that triangle. One times the triangle is only four times ten to the six. And then I got to add in the square at the bottom, which is one times two ten to the six, which gives me a total of two ten to the six, and that gives me four times ten to the six joules there. And then the last little piece, I need the area of this one little section over here, which that one's going to be easy. Base would be 1 times 2 times 10 to the 6, which gives me 2 times 10 to the 6. So now if I'm actually looking for the work done over this entire cycle, the work would actually be equal to negative, in my case, 12 times 10 to the 6 joules. Um, part B says, and we just talked about this, what would happen if it was compressed from F to I? You just find the area under the line. It's just if you went from F to I, work would be done on the cylinder at that point. And so all we'd have to do at that rate is just change the answer to a positive and if you notice in the answers that's all that happened that answer is negative this answer is positive but anyway the next video I actually shoot will be on like thermodynamics uh, the next video will actually pick up with this how the problem you just worked ties into that equation and that's where we'll pick up next time this is the first law of thermodynamics but anyway uh, peace out